Welcome everyone. Uh, in this video, I'm going to try and show the reason why we should all be doing uh, the what if style testing. Uh, it's just there are so many things that you discover along the way, and as opposed to you know just taking the word of another researcher, um, I just always like to question. Or is it really what's going on there? So we've got 13 volts here. Uh, we're going to be using my circuit, which is a variation on Tesla's one wire through earth transmission circuit um, that utilizes two earth lines. And I'm just going to show you uh, step by step, you know, each little discovery, no capacitors. What I like to do is get a circuit up. Um, with its bare essentials and then try and work out how much of the extras are necessary. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, I'm just going to show you some of the differences on the voltmeter. Uh, so I suppose we turn that, that system on. Okay, my little wireless uh, coil is used just to tell me that it's on because it's very dangerous as you'll see through this demonstration um, this will boot you in the ass uh, so you know whilst I encourage people um, I also want them to be careful so uh, I use that as an indicator circuits live circuits running could be a problem now we've also got my neons there uh, so for those of you familiar with the circuit, we're just this green line here goes to the neons and just one of those, the other one's just radiantly lit. You can see the one on the right is brighter. That's the one that's connected through the blue line there, comes out of that neon on the white line. This line goes to earth. So that's one earth. Um, what does that produce? Uh, let's have a look here, voltage wise. So I will now connect this white lead to Tesla's coil, which is 336961, patent number 336961. That gives us 34 volts DC out of uh, that uh, Tesla coil, which is um, inductively coupled. It is not electrically coupled. And as I said, there are no capacitors in this circuit at the moment. Um, so, and, and the reason why I like to do that is, you know, we all know capacitors make a massive difference, but at the same time, uh, I think the best way to find the appropriate value for a capacitor is to find out what the circuit does on its own. And then you can, I find it easier to calculate uh, what I should be using based on uh, what, the, what the naked output is. Okay, so 34 volts, nothing that impressive. Um, if I... If I just come near it, it uh, adds an, an extra couple of volts, which just takes it over the high voltage for this meter, which is 36 volts, I think. And so it just beeps. But if I place that, I've got a, just a 12 volt um, LED light, um, warning bright light. Okay, so that's nice and bright. I love how the way the camera picks up the actual LED uh, reflectors inside there. But um, so when we look at the voltmeter now, what is that light getting? That's only 10 volts. So that's not as much as what the light would normally consume. So uh, the light normally consumes six and a half, six and a half watts on its own no circuit included so and the circuits currently consuming 
4.7 watts. So that would be fair to assume, you know, 4.7 down from 6.5 um, because it's not at full intensity, not at 12 volts, which this was tested at 12.82 volts. This meter is displaying 10 volts going to that light. So probably around about the 80% output. But let's keep in mind, my circuit's also running. So it's definitely more efficient than running that light by itself at 6.5 watts. So whether the 20% is relevant, I still think that's bloody bright enough. Um, but there are modifications that you could then go on to make that will make that uh, even better again, you know, with capacitors and that sort of thing. But we'll continue the testing uh, without these things. So disconnect that light. Voltage should jump back up to where it was before, 36 volts. So there's this need to you know test, well, what if I do this? What if I did that? There's only one um, earth connection that goes through the neons. What happens, though, because I know my circuit can be connected directly to earth without shitting itself. Um, so there we go. We're directly connected to earth. What's the voltage now? Voltage now is 150 volts. Okay, so going through the neons is a means of separating the circuit. If I was to place in the second earth, which I'll do in a second here, uh, but if I was to place that into my circuit um, and, and not the actual um, Tesla patent that's been added on top of my circuit, if I place the second earth on my circuit, it will short the whole thing out. It pulls it down out of resonance. You've got um, a dual connection straight to earth. And that's where the neons come come in. So if I want to connect my circuit to Earths, you will need to use the neons if you don't have a load. So normally I'll run, run this light through to Earth and then a second Earth comes back to my circuit and I can add that second Earth anywhere in my circuit as long as I have resistance here and that, that light acts as that resistor. Um, I will try and get a resistance reading on that light just to see what it is out of curiosity. Each, each different bulb has a different effect. So um, you're going for, you know, we, you might not have access to some of this equipment, so you might not have access to resistors. You might not have money to purchase resistors. Um, light bulbs are uh, nothing short of being resistors, particularly the incandescent type. Um, they're, they're more like resistors. Um, you know, that's basically what they're doing. They're resisting, they heat up, and they glow. Uh, so, oh, so we're back here looking at the volts. Uh, we're doing 151 volts. Now, if I add in my second earth and uh, I'll just get rid of this diode that's on it All right so this is earth number two um, these earth stakes are in the ground I've shown them in my other videos they're just probably 15 centimeter long pieces of metal um, nothing special don't have to go buy expensive copper earth rods, which I don't believe are appropriate. I don't believe even in their commercial use. I don't believe commercial um, uh, copper earth rods are a very good conductor. Once they come in contact with you know, anything, really, air, water, um, they start to build up a skin 
and they become less conductive, whereas the old school water pipe, much better, much, much better. Get a star picket, stick it in the ground, anything that's ferrous metal will do a much better job than copper. And how do I know that? Because I tested it, right? I, d I don't rely on textbooks and I don't rely on the trade. I don't rely on electricians. They recite what they, you know, what they're just repeating. That's what they're good at. They repeat. So if what you were told or what you were taught was wrong and you repeat it, who's the fool? All right, so. And then, and then you bring it up to your teacher and he laugh at you, make you realize you are the fool. Okay, so um, here we go. We have the second earth line. We have 150 volts with one earth line directly connected into earth. We're going to add this second earth line to the output side, the positive side of Tesla's 336961 patent. And we'll go back here, have a look at the voltage when that occurs. Going on now. 480 volts. Okay, so big, big difference. Now, what happens if we put that neon back? Put that neon back. And let's connect that second earth line to the same spot. 58. Mm, big difference. Massive difference. What if we connect it to the inside of the coil, so before the diodes? On now. Uh, okay, so 35 second earth on drops it. So same thing with testing neons. You can add them in different spots and see, well, what happens if I directly feed my voltage into the earth? And what happens if, you know, it's just a constant thing, just constantly experimenting. But uh, if I can safely, uh, actually, well, I'll connect a capacitor here. Everyone likes explosions. So I'll connect the capacitor, we'll get a big bang out of it. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much all I wanted to show is just there are different spots to connect different things. Uh, what happens if we connect this second earth to the negative side? We get 58. Again, we're, rem we're running through that. Um, Neon, I'll remove that. We'll put that my high voltage line on my circuit straight to earth. We've got 150, 100, let's say 150, let's be fair. And we were going to connect this second earth line to the negative. Same, 483. Connect it to the positive. About the same for 79. So that's a that's a difference already there. It's only small, but it, every little thing counts. So 483 on the negative. So we connect that on the negative there. We're at 483. Connect it on the positive, and we get 479. So it's worth experimenting with these different things. Now, I don't know if MTEX1 can be connected directly to ground like that. Um, it, it probably should be able but I used to connect laser sabers jewel ringer to ground, so it should be able to. But take a second earth line and then run it around and then do it with and without the neons and see the different effect you get. Um, all right, so now I will connect this capacitor and try not to kill myself. 
Okay, the capacitor is now connected. Voltage, uh, it reads zero. The capacitor itself isn't complete, completely connected. So I'll connect this to the negative and then it will start to charge that cap up. And it's going on now. Okay, and we're up to 48 volts. Right, not very high, not as as high as what we've seen before. Oh no, that fell off. Okay. Okay, so just connected capacitor. And it is charging. So that's probably maximum voltage with that capacitor. That capacitor is a 20 UF 1400 volt DC. The, the one has been erased. It's the same capacitor as that one. And you can see the one on that one is still on the case. I must have scratched that one off accidentally. So that's what we've got there. 131. Now we add in the second earth line again to Tesla's patent because if we connect that to my circuit, we need to have the neon uh, to have two earths or, or the load. Remember, it must be there can't be there must be some sort of resistance, otherwise you're connecting two with the same line. Okay, so here we go. Uh, turn that meter on so we can bloody see. And we quickly get up to five hundred and climbing. Okay, so I don't think it goes over 520 from what I was looking at before, but that's that's pretty um, dangerous. So I'll disconnect that earth. I will disconnect this capacitor from my circuit. It's not good to go shock waving. Um, when you, when you create a, a detonation like what I'm about to do now, you are actually creating a shock wave and that will go straight through my coil and there is a chance that the coil will turn off. Here we go. Oh, this is dangerous. Oh, shit. Okay, excuse the French. That's what you're dealing with. Please make sure you're careful. That is real. All right, thanks for watching. Have a nice day.